Good morning, class. Our project is titled Ag Eagle Optimization. I am Juliano Graal, the team leader for Team X. This is Daniel Pena, and he's also a team member, and he'll be in charge of the introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Today we'll be going over UAVs used in agriculture, and we'll be optimizing the design in order to increase the uh, flight time. UAVs are, can be used in agriculture to spot unhealthy crop areas to, be, to later target those areas specifically for fertilizer and pesticides. Now this can reduce maintenance costs for the farmer, which could then increase the profit for the farmer, which is the end goal, making money. And then to, to optimize the UAV, the ad eagle to be specific, we're going to increase payload. And, and in order to increase payload, we need to increase lift. Now, you know, we are doing this to put in a larger battery to increase our, our, our flight time. Now to increase the payload, we plan to optimize the wing geometry. Now, to go over a brief history of UAVs, we're gonna send it off to Giuliano. Hey everyone. This is a brief historic overview of different models of UAVs, but here we see that the first UAV wasn't actually a winged vehicle, it was actually a balloon that had an explosive tied to it. Now in 1849, the Austrians were trying to attack some cities within Italy because they had taken, they had taken some of those uh, cities. Uh, the explosives were released, re released from balloons um, via a wire trigger. Now, it was pretty pretty primitive. They had a long copper wire extending up to the balloon, and uh, whoever was in charge of detonating the explosives had a battery, and they would connect the positive and negative terminal. Now, this was considered the first strategic use of the UAV, since the, the, ter the terrain around Venice was uh, very watery and a lot of lagoons. They used this balloon to overcome uh, the range of their artillery since they could not move their artil artillery any closer. So this eventually led to the invention of the winged uh, UAV. <clears throat> now here in 1916 we see the Rustin Proctor AT or the aerial target. It was the first known pilotless vehicle and so this is a picture here of them uh, being mass produced in a factory and this is a picture of the concept of reimagined, or, sorry, re reimagined uh, today to see how it looked like. <clears throat> Now, the most um, revolutionary part about this one is that it was remote controlled. It was not, not yet autonomous, but being remote controlled was uh, very new. Um, it was achieved by Archibald M. Lowe. He was an English engineer, and he was able to control the uh, AT with uh, radio frequencies, radio, uh, radio signals. And so this um, branched into a, a different area that we call also remotely piloted vehicles, RPVs. So in 1917, Hewitt Sperry's automatic airplane. This was uh, quite different from the uh, aerial target. This one was actually considered an aerial torpedo. That's what they were going for. Um, it was considered also to be known as the first cruise missile, which is uh, definitely more modern. This one had the ability to travel 30 miles to its target and deploy a payload. So in the, during the test flights, that payload was just simply a, a bag of sand. And the error margin for the delivery of the, of the payload was within plus or, mi plus or minus two mile range, um, but this was uh, only 14 years after the first flight had ever been done by the Wright brothers. So this is pretty revolutionary in terms of uh, its capabilities. Not only does it fly, but it can go a certain distance and deliver a payload remotely. <clears throat> and so now in 1959, we have the Aerojet General SD2 Overseer. This is when um, reconnaissance drones were, were starting to uh, be debuted specifically obviously for war applications, military applications, uh, for spying. This here is uh, the uh, SD2 being released from the back of a truck as it would um, be released via uh, two, two rockets. So it would be shot into the air via two rockets. Now it was, it was equipped with a couple of sensors, uh, primarily a camera, but also an infrared sensor and a radar. The radar was actually side mounted so it could see while it was uh, turning it could uh, detect what was on, on land. So like I said, rocket power, uh, global launch, uh, mobile launch capability, which is uh, pretty new, and uh, it had a pre-programmed flight path. This was very different from uh, just aiming it in one direction, having it uh, go in that direction until you wanted the payload to be released, but this was ultimately where it failed. It, didn't, it wasn't used for very long because the uh, pre-programming wasn't very done, but it did pave the way for modern, modern imaging drones, and that's what we'd like to focus on. This is the Ryan model 147. This had 13 other sub models, 
but uh, the B, which is called the lightning bug, was used for aer aerial reconnaissance. Uh, it was used to spy on, on communist countries like North Korea, uh, communist China, and Vietnam. And um, it was actually going to be used during the, uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis to spy over Fidel Castro. And this is what uh, brings us to um, a fork in the road where you have aerial purposes for aerial imaging, and you have obviously more destructive uh, drones, but this is uh, where we'd like to focus on in terms of where we'd like to see uh, it go. Since we, we cover um, more commercial applications, especially in the agricultural uh, sense, this one was very um, impactful because it did you know, utilize a lot of imagery, it did use a lot, utilize a lot of sensors, and ultimately that's where um, we want that's what we want to optimize for the agricultural purposes. All right, hello class. Uh, there's a different, definitely a whole lot of models right now uh, on the market itself, but we're focusing on the Ag Eagle because it does have a lot of technologies that the other drones do have, uh, which consists of a hardened fiberglass and carbon fiber uh, frame. What this allows the Ag Eagle to do is it, it's able to sustain crosswinds up to 40 miles an hour, and also it makes it what they would call tractor tough. And uh, on the farms itself, there's a lot of hazards in which this UAV can actually be broken. And so they make it a whole lot tougher for it to withstand that sort of uh, nature of daily day-to-day -day use. What they also have is uh, some flight time and payloads. Currently, that model is uh, only optimal for three pounds of payload, so there's not too much that you can add on to this UAV. The flight time is currently 30 to 40 minutes, which might be able to cover about 100 acres or so. So this UAV is only optimal as well for these smaller farms and for it to make some money further on down the road they need to increase this battery time and the payload that it can take. This uh, UAV is also actually launched from a bow and arrow contraption that's called a long bow. And so what it's pulled, it's kind of pulled down and then it's actually launched up. So it's very hands-free and this doesn't require a whole lot of training for these farmers who are very, what we consider not too technologi technologically advanced. And so this is a perfect uh, technology for them as it also lands on the crops very softly. What we have now is the Ag Eagle has two different types. There's a, a there's a classic and there's a rapid. Now the rapid Ag Eagle brings uh, another opt, uh, another element to the UAV itself. It has a uh, normal difference vegetation index camera, and what this does is that it uh, it catches the energy that plants emit, and so that this is how they pinpoint the problem areas in their crops themselves, and this is how they deliver the pesticides and the fertilizers directly to that plant. Uh, the rapid planning, this is a software that comes with a program that is very easy to use, uh, uh, as stated before. It takes various pictures above the, the crops and it actually compiles all these images into one photo for the farmer to easily see. And the results are pretty much as simultaneous as the pictures are taken, so they can take the appropriate action so that these crops don't uh, see any sort of life uh, that actually increases the life that they had and there's no waste in their yield. The possible future developments that we as a team thought up of are a few things that would make the Ag Eagle a lot more accessible to other farmers. So what we have is that we're going to increase the payload as is going to be spoken about in the next section. Uh, the, we're going to increase the battery life because right now, as we said, only this only gives about 30 to 40 minutes of flight time. And uh, it's definitely going to give a whole lot more areas to cover and that's going to make it more marketable to larger farm owners for 1,000 acres or even more. Uh, we're gonna, we want to add additional cameras to even the basic models because if you have the rapid, then you have to use the software. But if you had maybe just the cameras to add on the classic, then you would be able to do a whole lot more with just the easy base model. And that could actually be a little more significant to farmers who don't like to use computers or whatnot. And uh, definitely want to make it FAA approved. As of right now, it's not currently approved because it has a ceiling of up to 400 feet and anything above 400 feet poses a safety risk to uh, any sort of airplanes or aircraft uh, in the general vicinity. And the way we can do this is to add any sort of radar and also have the farmers take note of this and program the UAV so that if anything within, let's say, a 10 mile radius it reads on the radar, it will be able to lower itself past uh, underneath the ceiling and thus uh, there would be a whole lot safer. And they can fly a lot higher to image everything in a timely manner. Hello everyone, 
as we were talking before, we plan to increase the flight time of the Eagle to cover to cover larger areas of farmland to accommodate for farmers who have large more acres. Now, to increase to increase uh, the flight time, we need to add a larger battery. And but to add the larger battery, we also need to increase the lift force of the Eagle. Eagle. To increase the lift force of the Eagle, Eagle, we plan to play with the weight geometry instead of just adding a larger motor and larger battery. Because if we do that combination, we might end up with the same amount of time flight time. So we're trying to get as much lift force as possible without adding extra weight. So we, we thought uh, playing with the weight geometry was our best option. One of our main goals, or one of the, the best ways to increase lift force is to increase the coefficient of lift. Now, one of the one of the ways to increase coefficient of lift is to increase your angle of attack. When, and, 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 in, and for our angle of attack, we decided to stay between a range of five and six degrees because this gives us a sweet spot between the, the, the coefficient of drag and the angle of attack. And then also, to increase the, the to, to add to the, to the lift force, we plan to add a anaerobic angle. Now, this angle is, the reason for this angle is because if we have a, a plane with a zero anaerobic angle, we have a, a straight wing plane. And when it goes under load, it flexes where the tips go up. Now, when, when this happens, you reduce your surface area of your wing, which then reduces your, your lift force. So by adding an anaerobic angle, what we'll be doing is the tips of our wings will be lower than the root of the wings. So that when the plane is under load, it flexes, and we are using as much surface area as possible. Now, it, it, studies show that uh, uh, anaerobic angle of about 20 degrees can give you a lift to, to drag coefficient ratio of about 1.9. But the problem with having such a large angle is that th this is mainly used to destabilize the plane for large car uh, cargo planes to be able to turn easier. So since we don't want to destabilize the ad eagle too much, we're going to stick with about an, an 8 degree uh, angle. And that also that's also because the, the load that this plane is under isn't too large. So that this way, when the plane is in flight and under load, the wings will, 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 the tips will give us a zero degree anaerobic angle, which will increase the, the lift force as much as possible. In closing, uh, I would like to say a few remarks uh, to actually expose our Ag Eagle a little more. Uh, us as engineers, we have the responsibility to better the world that we live in. And with a growing population that should be up to maybe 9 billion in the next 10 years, we have the responsibility to feed all those extra people that are going to inhabit the earth. And I truly believe that with uh, our presentation and adding more exposure to Ag Eagle, hopefully it's a technology that's a little more adopted by many farmers in order to increase their crop yield and feed these people. Thank you everyone for your attention. We hope you've enjoyed our informative presentation.